part four. So <clears throat> what we have now is we have the, our objects in our model space that we just created. And what we want to do is we want to actually go forward and start to create our objects using actual dimensions. And so what we need to do is we need to get rid of all this, all these objects, you know, within our model space. To do that, what we want to do is we want to select the objects. So again, there's redundancy in AutoCAD, and what we want to do is we want to delete, uh, first select and then delete these objects. So I'm going to first start off by using method one, okay, which is just mousing over the object. You'll see that when it happens, um, it becomes bold, and when I click on it, you'll see that the appearance of the object changes. So you'll see there's grips and then it turns into um, a dashed line. That basically means it's selected and we'll work with grips next week, um, I believe, or later on. Um, so we'll start to familiarize ourselves with that a little bit later on. Don't worry about that just yet. The command for deleting something is E for erase. So I can either type in E for erase, I can type in erase, or I can click on the tool button above and I can use the erase tool. Um, and then keep in mind that you don't, when whenever you enter a command into AutoCAD, you don't have to click into the command line and type it in. Once you start typing in a command, it's going to automatically enter it into the command line. So you don't have to waste your time doing that. You can just start off by typing and it'll recognize that. So if I type in erase, first of all, sorry, select my object, E, or erase, hit enter, and it'll erase it. Okay. What I can also do is I can select something by using um, the boxes that are created when I move my mouse. So what that means is that if I click in model space, you'll see that if I move my mouse down to the lower left hand corner, it has this green box. Okay. If I move it up into the upper right, it has a blue box. And what that means is that with the green box, Okay, if I move it like this and click enter, what happens is that if any objects touch the green box, then they'll select. Now, if you notice, this is a line that I created from the line command. This is a line that I created from the polyline command. So if I hit escape, you'll see that if I mouse over the polyline object, okay, it all highlights. If I mouse over the line object, okay, only a segment of that uh, highlights and that's because that's the difference between the line and the polyline. Now some people say they always use the polyline as opposed to the line. Um, it just makes it easier down the road but what we'll notice um, and what we'll see that when we start to work with this a little bit in more advanced modes and start to work with the poly at line edit that we can actually take a line that is segmented like this and turn it back into a polyline. But just so you know, those are the two differences between the polyline and the line command. At first glance, they seem to be the same thing, but they're really not. They work differently. Um, so if I select my objects that way, I can hit E and enter. Okay. Um, and if I use the blue selection box, so if I take the blue selection box and I select um, the segments of my line, Okay, notice that only a few of them select. Okay, and that's because the object has to be fully engulfed in that blue box in order to be selected. So what I usually do is I usually use the green just because I find it to be a little bit faster. And you can select these objects, okay, and you can select them even after. So it doesn't have to be, you know, selecting them all at once, but you can go and you can pick and choose after. If you choose um, to deselect something, okay, if you don't want it included in this, all you have to do is hold down shift and select it again and it'll deselect it. And then you can hit E and enter and then get rid of it. Okay. Um, so what we want to do is we want to start to add some uh, real dimensions to uh, our lines in AutoCAD or our objects in AutoCAD. Okay, and this is actually going to be directly related to uh, your homework that you have to do for this week. So again, AutoCAD is redundant. If we want to um, add in dimensions and type in specific dimensions, there's again a few ways of doing it. Okay, so the first thing is that uh, AutoCAD automatically recognizes inches, okay, as part of its units. So if I type in, for example, 36, 
okay, it's going to say, well, that's automatically 36 inches, so that's automatically 3 feet. So it kind of depends on the way that you prefer to use it. A lot of people just use inches, okay, in, in inputting um, dimensions. Um, some people use feet and inches. Again, it just depends on your personal preference. So to begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in L for line, and I'm going to create a series of lines. Okay, so I'm going to specify my first point. Okay, so you should be familiar with this method already. Okay, just by doing that. Um, now what I want to do is I can move my mouse okay, off into an angle. This is just a random angle, and I can type in 24. Okay, so as I said, just by typing in 24 and hitting enter, okay, and then escape to get out of that command, it's going to give me a line that's 24 inches long in that random direction. Okay, um, but what I might want to do is I might actually want to make my lines straight. Okay, and that's very common because a lot of times we're dealing with straight walls. So I'm going to select this line and I'm going to hit E for erase and enter. Okay, you can also use the, de the delete uh, key on the uh, keyboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my line command. So I'm going to type in L for line, and I'm going to specify my first point. Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to turn my orthogonal mode on. And that's one of your tools, your drafting settings and your drafting tools that's down below. So it's this fourth one in. Okay, and that's your ortho mode. So you can either click on that. Okay, as we said before, it's gray, so that means it's off. If it's blue, that means it's on. So I'm going to either click on that, okay, to make it blue to turn it on, and you'll see that now my mouse is constrained in the 90 degrees. Or what I can do is if I mouse over, you'll see that it's associated with a uh, function key, so F8. I can hit F8 on my keyboard to turn it off, and then if I hit it again, it'll turn it on. So that's another um, really quick way of getting you to save uh, a little bit of time when you're starting to work with this. Now, um, as I see in your handout, uh, there's a few ways of entering these dimensions. Now, the first one that we saw was just a, uh, you can enter a number, okay, so 24. It'll automatically assume 24 inches, so that's why you don't have to type in the little inches symbol. Um, but when you start to work with feet, okay, that's when you actually have to indicate that that's a foot, you know, by using the foot symbol, um, or else AutoCAD's going to mistake it for inches. So if I want something to be five feet, okay, I would type in five, and then the foot symbol, and enter. And it's going to snap it to five feet down below. Again, I'm going to hit escape, and I'm going to zoom out double click to do my zoom extent. So, you know, again, it has the drawing limits on there, so you might not see all of it. Okay, and then I just made a line five feet in that direction. If I type in, let's say five foot three, okay, so I just hit, uh, typed in L for line again, so, uh, specified my start point. Again, I'm gonna move it, you know, my mouse down in the down direction, and I'm gonna type in five foot and then this next mark is optional, but you can do dash three, okay, for five foot three, and hit enter and escape out of that. Um, I can either type in L again, you know, to start off my line command, or what you can also do is in order to repeat a command, you can just hit enter. So I can hit enter, and you'll see that it'll bring me back into my line command. So again, that saves us an extra step. So if I specify my first point, I want to type in five foot three again, but now I'm going to type in five foot three without that dash. Okay. Now again, anytime that I don't have a foot symbol or an inches symbol after a number, AutoCAD's going to assume that that's inches. Okay. So if I do five foot three, I need to make sure that I have the foot symbol in there. But if I just say three, okay, and that's three inches, then if I uh, don't have that inches symbol in there, that's fine. It's going to automatically assume that that's three inches. Or what I can do is I can just hold down shift, get that inches symbol in there, and then it'll recognize it as five foot three inches. Okay, so you'll see once I hit escape and get out of the command, you'll see that they're actually about the same size. Now, when I start to work with fractions, 
Okay, it gets a little bit trickier because as we noted before, um, the space bar means enter. So we can't do five foot three enter, okay, or, or space because that means enter and um, that is going to get us out of the command. Okay, so it's going to stop us short of actually entering in that fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in line again or you can just hit enter to get your last command back. I'm going to specify my first point. I'm going to say five foot, let's say three and three quarters. Okay, so there's a couple ways that we can do it. We can either do five foot dash three, okay, for three inches, and then dash, which essentially makes up your space, okay, three slash four for three quarters inches. Okay, again, AutoCAD's going to automatically assume it's inches if we don't have the inches mark. So that's optional. We can either leave it as is now, or we can add the inches symbol like that. Hit enter and escape out of that. Or what we can do is, again, if we type in L for line, I can do five foot. Now, again, that first uh, dash is optional. Okay, so I can say three point seven five. Okay, so three point seven five inches is three and three quarters inches. Hit enter click on that. Um, now there might be times when, you know, there isn't a decimal that you can use. So, you know, if you have, for example, 11 sixteenths, okay, if I move my mouse down, uh, I can say, um, let's say five foot three dash 11 sixteenths. Okay, and so that'll be five foot three and 11 sixteenths. Okay, so you can do it either way. Those are also outlined in your handout that accompanies this uh, tutorial so you can see the different ways of doing it um, you know if you want to do a, a simple fraction just a regular fraction if I want three eighths of an inch okay I can hit enter to get back into my line command specify my start point and then just say three eighths okay and that'll automatically assume that it's three eighths of an inch and it's three slash eight so that has your fraction and that'll snap the line to three-eighths of an inch.